thanks very much for turning out this morning on yet another sad and horrific morning for the people of Gaza. Ireland has returned 13 MEPs. We sit in four political groupings here in the European Parliament. All of the political groupings have signed up to our joint statement, which we've produced today in advance of the EU summit taking place this afternoon. And I'm going to read it for you now. It says, with regard to the current situation in the Middle East and the occupied Palestinian territories, Irish members of the European Parliament from across a broad spectrum of political groups wish to echo the recent resolution passed by the Dáil, our Parliament, the position adopted by the Irish Government and the statements of the United Nations Secretary General and therefore urge the Council of the European Union to call for an immediate ceasefire as well as urgent efforts to meet the humanitarian needs of the people in Gaza. We stress the universal applicability of international humanitarian law, its binding nature on all parties in all conflicts and remind the Council that indiscriminate warfare resulting in the killing of civilians cannot be justified in any circumstances. Given the intensity of hostilities and the enormous loss of life that has already occurred, we consider that calling for anything less than an immediate ceasefire would depart from the European Union's responsibility to uphold international law, to protect human rights and to secure peace. And that is signed by representatives of all of the political groups um, involving Irish MEPs here in the Parliament. Now, we have a number of colleagues here. A number had to leave and a number can't be here, uh, but um, I'll maybe ask Billy to quickly say a few words as he is rushing for a train. Uh, th thank you, Claire, uh, Ambassador. First, I just want to convey my sympathies to, uh, to your people, uh, particularly uh, the people in Gaza who are under siege at the moment. So we do need to reiterate that we need an immediate ceasefire for a number of reasons. We have to get humanitarian aid in, we have to assess the situation in Gaza itself, and we also have to call on Israel and Hamas to abide by the reality that we cannot be targeting civilians, civilian infrastructure in any way with regard to the hostilities that are there. So in an immediate ceasefire, nothing less will do. And that will allow us to assess what is happening on the ground. And we have to call for people to abide by all their obligations in international uh, law, the Geneva Convention, and we have to ensure that there's no more targeting of civilians and civilian infrastructure. Okay. Mick, would you like, yeah. yeah. Um, I think people all across Europe are absolutely horrified at what's happening. It is blatantly obvious that Israel are targeting civilians in Gaza and the West Bank, and there's incredible loss of life. Who would have thought that 2,000 children would be killed in less than three weeks? A beggar's belief. Less than three weeks, 2,000 children. We've had the collective punishment. No water, no fuel, no food. Hospitals are closing down, the ones that weren't bombed. We have to stop this. And a humanitarian pause will not stop the bombing. It will only localise halts to hostilities in certain areas and it will continue elsewhere. We need a ceasefire. It's the least that we can ask for. Thanks, Mick. Luke, do you? Uh, thanks, Claire. Uh, thanks, Ambassador. Um, uh, I think it was important today, in advance of the Council meeting, that all Irish MEPs came together with a united message, and that united message is very clear. We want a ceasefire. We want Israel to abide by international law. Um, no one has a problem with anyone defending themselves, but there's a massive problem when you target, target civilians. And far from making themselves safer, they're actually making themselves less safe. So I'm calling for an immediate ceasefire, and uh, the sooner the better, because this is just an appalling situation. I don't think there are any superlatives that can really explain it. It's just, it's just horrific. Thanks, Luke. And I think it's very well, we know for sure 
that we represent the views of the majority of people in Ireland, we represent the views of our Parliament and we genuinely believe that we represent the views of the majority of European citizens who have taken to the streets in their tens and hundreds of thousands over the past number of days, appalled by the stance of the EU so-called leaders who have been complicit in genocide and ethnic cleansing by allowing Israel to behave as it does. And our message to the summit today is that a ceasefire is different than a humanitarian pause. And international law and human lives and the lives of children depend on a ceasefire. And anything less than that will continue to make the European Union as the United States is complicit in this murder of innocent civilians. And that is not what the European Union claims that it represents. So it gives me, I'd like to say pleasure, but it's not. It's heartbreaking that we have to be here and that we introduce the Palestinian ambassador who is here with us to share uh, his thoughts at this important gathering on the morning of the European Council summit. Thank you very much, Claire, and thank you for all members of the Irish delegation to uh, raise their voice and to call for an immediate uh, ceasefire. And, and honestly, as a Palestinian, uh, I was shocked to see that the leaders uh, of the EU, uh, the leaders of the free world, failed to call for an immediate ceasefire, knowing that a ceasefire will save lives, will save lives in both uh, sides, Israelis and Palestinians. And uh, in this regard, uh, the failure of the EU to push for an immediate ceasefire is something very strange, is something that I cannot understand. And I hope that the summit tomorrow, I'm not very optimistic about the results of the summit tomorrow, but I hope at least that they will go in line of the resolution of the European Parliament if they are not in a position to call for an immediate ceasefire, at least to call for a humanitarian uh, pause. Today is the 19th day of bombardment uh, uh, on Gaza. Since yesterday, undiscriminate Israeli bombardment have increased in scale and in scope, and the number of massacred civilians also increased as a consequence. Last night alone, Israeli bombed 400 targets in Gaza with 400 bombs. Each one of them is one ton. It is 1,000 kilos. So you can imagine the devastating impact on this very heavily populated area in Gaza. The result is alone for the last 36 hours, 700 Palestinians were killed. Today at 9 a.m. this morning, all hospitals are unable to provide medical care to patients. The Palestinian Ministry of Health is therefore saddened to have to declare the collapse, the total collapse, of the health system in Gaza. Israel bans access to fuel to all hospitals. All injured and sick people cannot be treated because of the lack of electricity and medicine. 12 of our 35 hospitals in Gaza have already stopped minimum supply due to the Israeli attacks and the leak of fuel. Several hospitals have already rationed medical care to critical cases. This will lead to a massacre. Hundreds of thousands of patients, elders, babies, women and men, injured people, all of them will not be granted medical care. 7,000 people are under respiratory assistance. 150,000 babies are in incubators. The blackout will kill them all. 350,000 people are suffering of diseases such as heart diseases, cancers, and other diseases they will not receive any medical care as nine this morning. With many health facilities bumped and other behind breaking point, there are serious concerns about the accessibility of medical care for many people and for thousands of injured people in, in the Gaza Strip. 
For we estimate 50,000 women in Gaza, pregnant women, are in urgent need of a medical care, and none of them will be able to receive an adequate uh, medical health care. Since yesterday, this is also the worst scenario that happened since yesterday, we have observed the use of white phosphor munition in bombing a densely populated area. This result in the increase in the number of killed people and injured people. This is where my 700 persons who were killed in, during the last 60, 36 hours comes from. The numbers are frightening so far. In, tw in, in, in 19 days of bombardment, 6,500 Palestinians were killed, including 1,400 women, 2,400 children, 25 journalists, 65 medical personnel, 63 UN staff, 20,000 injured people in Gaza, 25 ambulances were targeted and destroyed, with 2,000 people also missing. They are reported to be missing because our rescue team cannot save them and they are still trapped under the rubble. Including of those 2,000 people, there are 870 children. The death toll is 20 times, and here I emphasize on that, in, 40 month, in, in 20 months of bombardment in Ukraine, it is reported that 10,000 civilians were killed in Ukraine in 20 months of bombardment. In Gaza, Gaza is a home, the, the, the Ukrainian population is 30, 33, 43, sorry, 43 million people. Of the 43 million people, 10,000 civilians were killed. Gaza is a home of 2.2 million Palestinians. In 19 days of bombardment, there are 6,500 6, Palestinian kills, which represent at a, a number of 22 times higher than the number of civilians killed in Ukraine in 20 months of bombardment. What, if you add to that, what reinforced the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza, 180,000 housing units were totally or partially destroyed during the, 19th, the 18th day of, uh, of bombardment. For those who know the Belgian geography, this is twice the number of all houses in the province du Namur in Belgium. You just can imagine the huge, massive destruction of civilian infrastructures. 1.2 million people are internally displaced in Gaza. Gaza is 360 k square kilometers with 2.2 million people. One half of them are internally displaced, including 600,000 people are hosted in UNRWA facilities, living in a very poor conditions, without, with many dangerous diseases are spreading among them. UNRWA has stated that it will not be able to provide people with the basic necessity as of today, which will increase the humanitarian catastrophe on Gaza. Those who manage to comply with the evacuation order given by the Israeli army to the southern part of Gaza are also like food, like electricity, like medical uh, care, like many other Palestinians. And regarding uh, the Israeli uh, call on Palestinians to move to the southern part of Gaza, the family of this famous journalist at Al Jazeera, he moved his family to the southern part of Gaza. Yesterday, his family was targeted. The house of his family was targeted. He lost his wife, Amina, 45 years old, his son, Ahmad, 16 years old, and his daughter, Malak, six years old, and his little son, one month and a half, 45 days. He moved his family to the southern part of Gaza. There is no one single safe place in the Gaza Strip today. Let's not forget about the West Bank. In the West Bank, since the beginning of the aggression against Gaza, in 19 days, 105 Palestinians were shooted and killed, 
Five of them were shooted and killed by settlers, those settlers that today are calling to burn out and to destroy the village of Hawara in a new wave of pogrom against the Palestinian people. And here I join my voice to your, jo to your voice, Claire, and, and, and my dear uh, members of parliament. We need an immediate ceasefire, otherwise Israel will continue mass massacring uh, more people. And to end, the EU, which is in a position today that failed to call for an immediate ceasefire, it should make sure that none of the EU member states is providing Israel with weapons that Israel is using to kill civilians. It, it should make sure that, that the International Criminal Court should investigate those crimes committed during uh, this current uh, devastating war against our people in Gaza. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, my dear uh, members of parliament. And I hope that uh, very soon we will be, uh, we'll stop talking about this war. Uh, the ambassador puts it very much in context. There was more bombs dropped in Gaza in the last three weeks than in the first year of the war in Afghanistan. There's over 2,000 children dead in less than three weeks. According to the UN, 545 children were killed in 18 months in, in Ukraine. What is wrong with us? The European Union insists that Israel has the right to defend itself. It doesn't have the right to bomb and target civilians. It doesn't have the right to target and kill 25 journalists in three weeks. This is a massacre, it's ethnic cleansing, and there's a massive responsibility on the European Union to get a ceasefire now and stop this absolute slaughter that's taking place. Thanks, Mick. And I think it is heartbreaking to listen to the evidence from Palestine itself and from Gaza. And that worryingly has to be one of the reasons why journalists now are being targeted. It's to silence Palestinian voices who are giving witness to the horror that is unfolding. They think that maybe the eyes of the world can be diverted while this goes on. And that's why we're here to make absolutely sure that that does not happen, because this is a new level of barbarism, really, from an Israeli state that is the only, I suppose, apartheid state on the planet at the moment. But this is beyond belief. And for the European Union, to settle for anything less than a ceasefire makes them utterly complicit. They're already complicit, let's be clear about it. They've already caused untold damage by their actions so far. This is a, not just a plea, it's a demand that they change course now uh, because they are so badly discredited in the eyes of so many people and they're shirking their responsibility in that regard. But, so it's absolutely not on.